Just run through the questions that you had for homework there firstly. So this was 5.1, okay, on page 69. So it asks you to state octet rule. Well, that's your definition. So octet rule states that when bonding occurs, atoms tend to reach an arrangement with eight electrons in their outermost shell. Okay, so that's your definition there. Then they said an ionic bond is the something. So they're looking for the force of attraction between oppositely charged ions in a compound. Then for part C, you're asked to give one use of sodium chloride. So you would say something like salt tablets. So we use sodium chloride to produce salt tablets to replace salt that might be lost by athletes during sweating. Now, the formula for magnesium bromide. Now, magnesium, when you look it up in the periodic table, is in group two, okay? Which means that magnesium has two electrons in its outer shell. So what happens? It loses those two electrons. And remember that when atoms lose electrons, they become positively charged ions. So there's your Mg plus two. Now, that's bonding, it says, with bromine, because they're asking you to write the formula for magnesium bromide. Remember we said IDE um, was the ending for a compound with two elements in it. So magnesium and bromine, magnesium bromide. Now, that is in group seven bromine when you look it up in the periodic table which means that bromine has seven electrons um in its outer shell so bromine needs one electron to have um, a stable configuration or to satisfy octet's rule so what will happen with bromine it'll become b or minus now do you remember we said in the last video that the sum of the charges on the ions has to add to give you zero so plus two minus one that's going to give me plus one. So I need a second B or minus so that the charges um, will add to give me zero. So now I have plus two, minus two. So when you rewrite the, the um, formula then for magnesium bromide, it's going to be MgBr2. So that would have been your answer to correct, okay? Now, for part um, E then, it asks you for one of the characteristics of transmission metals is that they exhibit a variable valency. Now, what that means um, is that the metals, the transition metals can lose um, um, a, you know, a variable or a different, I suppose you should say, I should say a different number of electrons. So for instance, iron is a transition metal and iron can lose either two or three electrons. If it loses two electrons, then it forms the iron Fe plus two iron. If it loses three electrons, then it forms iron Fe plus three iron. Copper is another example. Copper exhibits a variable valency. What does that mean? It means that, it, that, that copper can lose a different number of electrons. And you can have copper plus one ions, or you could have copper plus two ions, okay? So they exhibit variable valencies. We're going to talk about valencies later on again. Now, name the compound copper 2O. Now, what they're getting at here is they want you to um, figure out or to calculate the valency on the copper there, okay? So I'm going to call that X, if you like. Now, we know, now why am I calling it X, by the way? Because copper can either be plus one or plus two, and I'm not sure which form of copper you have here in that compound. So call it X for the moment, okay? Now, oxygen is in group six. Oxygen will always form O minus two. So I can write minus two down there. Now, two times X, so two X minus two is equal to zero because there's no charge up there. So then two X is equal to two, and then X is equal to plus one, all right? So X is plus one there. Or alternatively, okay, um, what you could say to yourself is, you know that oxygen is minus two, you know that the total charge on the copper has to be plus two, because the sum of the charges on the ions have to balance or have to add to give you zero. So if that's minus two, this has to be, the copper has to be plus two, but there are two of them. So two of them make plus two. So each copper is going to be plus one. So how will you write the formula of that then? So write it or the name. You're going to write copper one in brackets like that, okay? And then oxide, because you know it's plus one. So that's what they were getting at there at the end for part F, okay? Now, you were asked then also in um, on Edmodo, I just wrote out to draw dot and cross diagrams for magnesium and oxygen. So magnesium is in group two, so you would draw. Remember now for these, you have to dot 
one atom's um, electrons and cross the other atom's electrons. And then what will happen here, well, both of these will go over here to, to, um, to oxygen. So Mg becomes plus two because it's losing two electrons and show then that the oxygen is gaining. Now, don't forget to keep them as dots and you'll see that it's after gaining two. And there you have your Mg, your MgO shown using dot and cross diagrams. Okay, calcium as well is in group um, two. Chlorine, remember to X chlorine's electrons. Now, chlorine is in group seven, which means that you have to draw seven electrons there in the outer shell of chlorine. Now, what's gonna happen here? Well, one um, electron's gonna go over there, and then you have to draw another chlorine okay for the other electron from calcium now once calcium has lost two electrons it becomes plus two and each of these are minus minus one okay so plus two and two so you're just to, you you write your formula then ca cl um two okay the next one then was aluminium and fluorine now aluminium is in group three so if i dot the outer electrons there and i'm going to one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm after putting in an extra seven. So seven electrons in the outer shell of chlorine there, okay? So when you're showing your dot and cross diagrams, okay, this is going to, oops, sorry. Um, okay, so this is going to, that electron is going to go over there. Okay, now you have two more there that you need to get that you need to get rid of if you like. Okay, so remember now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. X over here and X over here. So what has happened to the aluminium? Well, aluminium has lost three electrons, so it's Al plus three. Each of these has gained an electron, has gained an X from aluminium. So you're going to write your formula AlCl3. So you need three of them so that aluminium can lose each of its three electrons, okay? And then finally for dot and cross, aluminium again is in group three. Remember to cross one set of electrons and dot the other oxygens in group six. So what's gonna happen here is that two of the electrons from aluminium will go to oxygen but look you have another one here so you have to draw another oxygen atom to get rid of that one two three four uh five six okay that will take that one but look you need another one so you need to draw another aluminium for that okay it goes over there but then you notice you've got two here so you need to draw actually another atom of oxygen to take that x and x so what would the formula be then? The formula would be how many aluminiums have I drawn? One, two, so Al2O3, okay? Now, um, so that's the bonding there. Now, can I just show you for a second there, if you were doing that, so if you were asked to write the formula for aluminium oxide, okay? Then you would say to yourself, right, aluminium is in group three, so it's gonna form minus three. Oxygen is in group six, so oxygen forms um, a minus two ions. So you'd say to yourself, I need the charges on the ions to add to give me zero or to balance, in other words, okay? So you need to find the lowest common multiple there for them. So you'll say six. They both divide into six equ equally. So it's Al2O3. And then double check, um, double check what you've done then. So two times plus three is plus six. Three times minus two is minus six. So yeah, they do add to give me zero. So that's where I got the previous, the previous slide there. The last thing that you were asked to do then was to write the formulas. Now, I showed you the photograph in your book there where, that, you know, where you have your complex ions. So don't be trying to learn off complex ions or anything like that. Um, but, um, you know, you do need to be, you become more familiar with them anyway as you use them. So potassium oxide was the first one. Now you need to say to yourself, right, potassium is in group one. So that's going to form plus one. Oxygen is in group six, so that's going to be minus two. So when they combine now, remember that um, the charges have to add to give you zero. They're not adding to give you zero. You need an extra plus one, don't you? So then when you write it, it's going to be K2O, okay? Because plus two minus two add to give me zero. So that's the formula that you would have in your answer. The next one then was lithium um, chloride. 
Lithium, when you look at it, is in group one. So lithium is going to form plus one. Chlorine is in group seven. Chlorine is minus one. So that's straightforward enough. The ions will attract. They are opposite charged ions will attract. And that's the, the answer. Lithium chloride. The next one you were asked was alum, um, ammonium, sorry, ammonium sulfate. Now, ammonium is one of those complex ions, okay? And it's NH4 plus. And you're asked to show that bonding with sulfate, which is actually another complex ion. Sulfate is SO4 minus 2 when you looked it up. So when you notice there, look, this is minus 2. This is only plus 1. So you need two of those so that you have plus two, minus two. Now, when you go to write two of them, you must use the bracket, otherwise it's going to look like 42 instead of two ammonium ions. They go as a, as a sort of a unit, okay? So there's your formula there for ammonium sulfate. Calcium phosphate now was a hard one. And when I was looking at your homework, some of you found this one difficult, okay? So let's have a look at this. Calcium is in group two, which means that calcium is going to form plus two ions. Com um, phosphate is one of those complex ions, PO4 minus three. Now, again, this is similar to your aluminium oxide example. You need the charges here on these ions to balance. So you look for the low, you know, the, the number that both of them, the lowest common multiple. What will both of these divide into? And six, these numbers will both e evenly divide into six. So you're going to have CA3 will give you plus six. And then PO4, 2 will give you minus 6. Is that okay? So that's your formula. So I'm just going to rub that out there for a second. So this is, oops, one second now. So this is what you would be writing as your answer, CA3, PO4, 2. And, and then just double check. This was plus 2. The PO4 together, okay, is minus 3. So 3 times plus 2 is plus 6. 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. So there you have your, your formula for calcium phosphate. Magnesium hydrogen carbonate. Now, hydrogen carbonate is one of those complex ions again with zero or, or negative minus one. Calcium is in group two, so calcium is going to be um, plus two. So, what you notice, I need two of these, don't you, for the charges to, to, um, to equal. So, when you write that now, now it's not 32, it's hydrogen carbonate, and you need your arrow there or your bracket there like that. Potassium, okay, permanganate, then you were asked next. Now, you will see that you've got a permanganate ion there, MnO4 minus. Potassium is K, so it's in group one, so it's K plus. Combine them together, KmnO4, potassium permanganate. That's the purple solid that you've used quite, quite a bit. Now, sodium dichromate, sodium, again, group one, so plus one. Now, dichromate is a complex ion, Cr2O7 minus two, but look, minus two there. So you're actually going to need two of these, aren't you, to balance to balance the, the minus two charge on the dichromate. So your formula then would be Na2Cr2O7, okay? And then finally, um, you had ammonium chloride. Now ammonium, again, if you look at your table, it's NH4 minus. Chloride is Cl minus because chlorine's in group seven. So that's going to form Cl minus. And they actually, look, the charge, um, the charge balances very nicely. So you 